Once I remember we had an educational symposium when I was in university and someone asked the crowd, why are we here? What are, why are we teaching? And I shouted out, to change the world. And I really firmly believe that. I think change comes from an individual level and what better way to make an impact than individually with students day after day. Improv as an example is a wonderful way to incorporate that well-being piece into our daily lives in a way that's creating a space for fun and for play and creativity and openness of ideas. With certain students, I've seen just this general fear in terms of sharing their ideas and this worry in terms of whether their ideas will be accepted, whether the role that they play in their peer group is valuable. When I first started, I felt awkward. Um, because I felt like people were gonna judge me over things that I did. But then later on, um, I felt more free to do more things without feeling awkward. Improv provides an integration into the goals that we're trying to achieve in terms of student well-being, creating active and empathetic listeners, creating students who are confident in their agency and their ideas. It's a beautiful, creative, playful way to engage students using curriculum, using it's adaptable to any kind of subject matter, and it provides a structure that's there to hold students in their growth. We're able to imagine that we are in a supermarket and we're able to use and apply all of that context vocabulary. We're able to use different verb tenses based on certain games, whether this is what's going to happen next, what just happened, what's happening right now. There's so many ways that I'm able to reinforce grammar points that might otherwise feel a bit dry in a way that's really dynamic, really fun, and really authentic for students to integrate into their own speech and to surprise themselves with the language skills that they indeed already have and we're kind of just uncovering under the surface. It feels nice to see me um, be more social with my, my classmates. It, it expands my brain, brain to new ideas. When in group projects, I um, tell others my ideas more than just letting other people have their ideas more. The amazing thing about improv is how rooted in support it is. So to use one of these exercises and just say, Okay, three words that you know in French, but we're going to try not to repeat those words between us and to celebrate after a student just says three words and to take those small joys and to celebrate every little piece of learning because I think sometimes we miss the great learning that happens day to day, that incremental piece of just learning a new word. It's a fun thing that I like to do with others. I, I sometimes make new friends. It helps me boost my confidence. I can try new things even if I fail. No matter what, I can be myself. The three goals of improv are listening, accepting, and committing. So listening to others' ideas, accepting those ideas as they are, and then committing to those ideas, which is a really great way for students to be put in situations that challenge them, that stretch them that little bit. And in terms of acceptance, the slogan of improv, the, the mainstay of improv is the idea of yes and. When you offer me an idea, I say yes and I add on to it. So it's not this idea of trying to change each other's ideas. It's really being in community with another, accepting their idea and building on that idea and seeing what we can build together. So students that are equipped with the skills of empathetic listening, of collaborating meaningfully with their peers, of being mindful in conversation, and really gaining the ability to work together moving forward and to solve some of the insurmountable problems that we have out in the world. They're gaining this confidence that their voice matters. In strengthening the classroom communities that we have, we're benefiting from strengthening our larger communities and moving forward together in a way that is rooted in that idea of working together.